Hi guys, I'm Yamoto Geek. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. I am going to go over the top 10 things that a brand new Bless Unleashed player needs to know. First thing on the list, as soon as you get out of the tutorial, you're gonna end up in this area called Marco's Farmstead. Now, there is gonna be little side quests that you gotta go see and people to talk to that's with these little symbols right here. By all means, go do that. Uh, what I would focus on first, to be honest, is gathering what's called Luminos and gathering uh, iron ore. So this is Luminos, it'll have like it'll look like a little bush they'll say gather a couple of things with luminos it creates different kinds of potions i'll get into that in a little bit it also replenishes your health when you gather this will also help you gain something called star seeds so star seeds are a type of currency in bless unleash that allows you to buy and sell on the limited market so you want to start building that up as soon as possible Luminos and iron ore tend to make the decent amount. One recommendation, don't undersell yourself in the market. Luminos and iron ore sell because they're the first things you need to get your crafting level up and they also make decent potions and that sort of thing. I'll get into that in a little bit. Also, Luminous and other types of gathering gains you health back. Use this instead of potions as you'll want to save your potions later for bosses and dungeons. And You'll also want to look for things called soul pyres. So these are soul pyres. They're there to heal you by just standing next. You can also use them and do a couple of things. So you can sit and share food. You can share this with other people. It gives different buffs like this raisin bread, for example, gathering mining logging speed, plus 5%, vegetable dumplings, critical hit rate, plus 3%, vegetable hot pot, 3000 hit point over 15 seconds. Those are just a couple of examples of things that you can actually share with up to 20 other people. There's also something called cooking at the soul pyre. First thing that they're gonna make you create is the salt grilled meat lunch box. It restores 100 hit points every two seconds while out of combat for the last 20 seconds. These are good so if you're out on the field or doing whatever you're not in combat and you have a few seconds to sit and eat and replenish your health, these are handy to have. Salvaging. As you go along you're going to be defeating different mobs and mobs are going to drop armor pieces. The armor pieces, they are good to create cores. I like to focus on the ones that aren't highlighted in white. Oh, so you see this wild shoulder armor, for example. The actual icon itself is a little darker than the other icons. It means that you cannot enhance it, and I don't find them overly useful, other than maybe a temporary armor piece if I get something that's higher than what I currently have. The ones that show fortification level on can be enhanced. Those might be good to save and use for later on. I will get into more on enhancements in another video. If you take the wild shoulder armor, for example, I'm going to salvage it. So I'm going to press and hold A. It's created uh, armor fortification stone and 43 of the gold cores. So there's gold and silver cores. These are gotten from different levels of armor. Anything that is a white armor icon, those will only give you the silver cores. Anything that you get that's green, blue, purple, gold, you can actually turn into the gold cores course, which you will need as you level up in armor. You're gonna see these icons, the little fire icon. Click in the right toggle on the map. You can actually go and select to find the different pyres. You see how they're highlighted in green now? There is a lot of them in and around the map. All you have to do is run by them and you've got them. If you happen to die while you're in a fight, there is three ways to revive. One is to allow another player to come and heal you. There is an incentive 
a title to get to heal people. So if you see somebody down, by all means, go heal them. There's going to be three different levels of healing. Level 1, 2, level 3. Level 1 is the quickest. That's going to be the fastest to heal. One and done. Level 3, normally if we're in the middle of a huge fight, I'm going to leave them. Just for the fact that it takes forever to revive them and it puts me at risk. If I get hit once, I have to start over again. Level 3 means that they've been killed and revived three times in a row without going back to a soul pyre. I would recommend after the second death that you go and choose to revive at a soul pyre rather than letting somebody heal you. That way, once you get to the soul pyre, you reset, you're good to go. Back to level one if you pass out again. You also have the option of using star seeds or recovery scrolls. I would avoid that unless you are fighting a boss or in a dungeon. Otherwise, just go back to the soul Pyre. So the third option is going back to the soul pyre. It does charge you gold each time you do that, however it will teleport you to the nearest soul pyre that you have passed by to recuperate. Once you're around the soul pyre to revive, um, you can go into your bag, consumables, and I always try and keep resurrection sickness potions on hand. Those are about 10,000 gold a piece, but it also eliminates the penalty that you get in resurrection. So the penalty basically means that you can only get get up to 30% of your hit point once you die and revive near a pyre. With the resurrection sickness, that allows you to have up to 100% healing. You won't be healed, however, you don't have to wait the extra two minutes that it takes to get the extra 70% health available to you. World bosses and any icon that looks like this portrait marker will give you drop chests. Once you complete the drop chests, you can open them for extra little goodies. My bag is full right now, so I cannot open anything. So I'm going to get rid of something that I don't need. So gold ore, it's pretty, it's only useful for getting gold. <laughs> So once you complete a world boss, you'll get these reward chests. Regional bosses respawn more frequently. World bosses are only about once a week. You can fight the world bosses multiple times. However, if you do not have that portrait icon, things that you will get from those boxes would be weapons, armor fortification stones, weapon fortification stones, extra little goodies that you would get from gathering, embers, armor sigil, and sometimes even sealed chest keys. This is from world bosses. These keep them, or you can sell them for a hefty sum of money, which brings me to the marketplace. Teleporters are a handy way to get around. You spend gold to get from one teleporter to another that you've already passed by. In order for them to work, you'd have to activate them. To activate them, all you have to do is walk near them. So right now, I'm going to go from Marco's homestead to where you are going to end up in Karzakor. These are what you would call star seeds. One of the first things to do in Karzakor is see Alvera. Alvera basically takes the gold that you earn from killing monsters and you can exchange it for a star seed. Right now, I am up to level 26 on this character, which means I have five attempts to get star seeds. You gain one attempt each, each ranking. So at level 5, level 11, level 16, level 21, and level 26, those are the five level points where you get an extra exchange attempt. I would recommend doing this daily so that you get the most star seeds possible because you will need star seeds in order to go to the market. Now here is the marketplace manager. You will find these all over the world. They have the same symbol. When you do gather your luminos and your iron ore, you can go and sell them on the market. You just go into your items and let's say, okay, I want to go sell some pyrite. You don't have to sell it for the price that it brings up. You can sell it for whatever price that you want. However, there's a couple of key rules that I've noticed. Don't overprice your items because no one will buy them. Don't undersell yourself because all you're doing is changing the market price for everybody else and you're making it more grindy to get all of the star seeds that you need. Make sure that you sell as many in a stack as you can. To register, you just press and hold A. It gets about 15% is the charge to list it on the market, so it's going to charge you up front. 
This is why you need the star seeds right away. And then you can also go in and check market prices under the purchase section. This is what I do all the time, just to make sure that I'm selling them for a reasonable amount. I'm not gonna undersell myself, I'm not gonna oversell myself. Once you purchase from the market, it's gonna get sent to your mailbox. Another thing I did was create alts. What I mean about alts is multiple characters. When I first started, I created three alts. I created a priest, I created a ranger, and a berserker. I wasn't sure what type would fit my playstyle the best. I just created three, went on with it, good to go. You can see that I don't use my ranger all that much because it's not overly appealing to me. Um, my berserker has been my favorite. Just try and level them all up. You'll get extra room in your warehouse. There's also benefits to creating your alts, such as storage space, bag space, and then your account space. There's three different types of spaces. So bag space, when you get those treasure chests, you get your bag pieces, you turn around and you will come up here to see your bag merchant. When you go to him, if you have the four pieces, you just interact and he will tell you either you have the pieces or you don't. If you don't, he'll remind you I need at least four bag pieces to expand your current backpack. So four pieces creates one space and you can see my backpack's red right now because it's overfilled. It happens very quickly in this game. To fix that, use your alt. Use the warehouse. Store your items in personal storage or account storage. Account storage basically means that no matter which alt that you're on, you can access your items. Personal storage means you can only access items for that character. You can usually buy account storage spots and personal storage off of the marketplace. That is another handy way to increase your storage space. If you create duplicate alts, so two berserkers for example, one of the other benefits is as you get better gear on the one character you can give your other character the hand-me-down which this for example the guard of the gatekeeper was one of my hand-me-downs from my angelina character to yamoto geek so this brings me to my next point gear to equip your gear basically you just go over whatever it is that you have. So let's say you can see all of my gear I have in my bag right now. You just go in, click A, click A again. When you see that little E icon in the corner, it means it's equipped. Now your gear score is automatically changed and higher. So you see how it goes from 873 up to 959. I've added another 86 gear points. That's what that little symbol underneath the B means. Fortification level, so this is level 5, it's almost to the point where it can be enhanced up to epic level. So right now it's a rare piece of gear. Epic gear basically means it's a higher gear score and it also gives you the benefits, for example, greater defense. It's not going to change any of the common um, stats. So those are something that you'll want to pay attention to because each piece of gear has different stats. So this one, for example, increases critical hit damage. This one increases artifact shards gained from salvage. I would get more artifact shards. It also, as you can see, there is a new appearance that popped up. Make sure as you're getting new armor that you put it on unless you intend to sell it. If you have excess and you're going to sell it, don't put it on. Once you put it on, Basically, you'd have to unbind it. Unbinding scrolls are costly, not worth it generally. Unless you end up with a mythic or a legendary item that you can sell for quite a bit of star seeds on the market. I'll get into that another time. The other thing to take a look at um, is the type. So this one says Crusader and Berserker, so that means both Berserker class and Crusader class can use it. The Priests, the Rangers, um, and the... The Priests, the Rangers, and the Mages cannot use this. Only Crusaders and Ber Berserkers. Same with the weapons. Weapons are very specialized to the class, so this would be Berserker only. You cannot give it to a Crusader character. Make sure that you are doing regional bosses and regional quests. 
you can see that will give you 100 SXP per regional quest. That's going to gain you skill points. So SXP is skill points. You go into skills, you're going to start off with the Gift of Valor. Gift of the Valor for Berserkers, for example, would be Seize, Leap Attack, and Relentless Cleave. You can also go in and learn the different stats, which you need the SP, or SXP, right? Um, right now I have five skill points, and this is from gaining my SXP. So five out of a hundred is what I currently have. That I can use to upgrade any of these. So for example, stun, if I wanted to upgrade that, I would need SP2, so skill points two. And uh, if I unlock all of these, it gives me an extra 300 max hit points. So I do recommend upgrading it all. I kind of skipped it on this character because this was one of my alt characters later on in the game. And it's also good to look at these ahead of time to see what attacks that you want to get, what benefits from them. So for example, Mark of the Wolf for a Berserker, we get less rage cost. So rage, I have something called Furious Earthbreaker. And this is what I mainly use with my Crescent Moon. This will be later on in the game. But the gear that I have is tailored towards these skills. If you have troubles uh, with defeating any of the world bosses, feel free to post that you need help in global. So all you have to do is press LB and the left on the D-pad. It will open up your chat. Tap once on that LT button. That will bring you to global. Enter Y to enter your message and you can write whatever that you want. Make sure if you are asking for help, you specify what boss and what channel. Channels are located on the bottom left portion of your map screen. To change the channels, you press and hold your L toggle switch. So you can change the channel to whichever one that you want. I recommend doing that just so that you can save time with trying to find a boss, because maybe they haven't spawned on one channel and they spawned on another. Feel free to switch channels, but if you need help, just like you see here, Bashal, channel one, Barmy D is asking for help, essentially. Or advising people that Bashal is up and free for the taking. If you do start on a world boss, it's always best to ask ahead of time before you even go and hit it. It's less selfish. It allows other people the opportunity to get the boxes and equipment and goods that they need. One of the things, One of the things in chat that you'll also notice is um, advertisements for guilds. Oftentimes guild leaders will list that they're recruiting for new members what the requirements are and what they're looking for in the guild. So there's some new guilds or guilds for new players. There's guilds for more experienced players. So make sure that you're keeping an eye out on that. You can also start your own guild. All you have to do is go up to the guild registrar. I've already created a guild. I have the Moto Geeks, so it's not going to go into that. But if you create a team of your own, just make sure to keep in mind communication is very, very important. Plus, if you end up joining in with some more experienced players, you have the benefit of asking them how to do stuff. We're more than happy to help other players. I know it's kind of an expectation that, of give and take. Hopefully you have fun. Just a side note for courtesy too. Later on in the game, you can get something called an estate. And the estate basically allows you to tame animals, to ride. I would start 
early. Uh, you're going to start out with a white sheep. Ride the mount as much as you can. This will shave off time wandering around on the map. If you see somebody off going and killing a bunch of horses, for example, or any of the animal types, if they're level 25 and above, that's likely that they are taming. Try not to hit the same animals that they are hitting. You could interfere with the taming. We can actually go in and use whistles. I don't have a proper whistle here for it, but you'll get the idea. So if I was around ostriches, I would use the ostrich call and you hit and kill them to tame them. When we tame them, a little heart will pop up. We put in a sequence of button mashing and voila, we either get livestock or a tame mouse. A good tip to not make some people bad at you in the game. And that wraps up my top 10 beginner's guide for Bless Unleashed.